how to do warfare for our kids. How to do warfare for our kids. Hi, Sister Elsie. Good seeing you. Hi, God bless you. We're so ready for this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. It's needed. We need to learn how to uh, pray for our kids. There is a difference between praying for younger kids that are under our mantle, kids that are um the kids that are still young to where they're still their understanding is not at the level of making decisions kids that are um older it's a little different good seeing you sister cassandra it's, so it it is a little different uh, the way that we need to pray for our you know let's say teenagers than our younger younger kids. So what's the difference and why? And the difference is that if you pray for um for a younger kid, it's much easier because they are under your covering. They're under your spiritual covering, okay? So we need to understand that if you are walking in holiness, if you are praying, you know, your mantle covers them. There is such a thing as a mantle in the spiritual realm. Especially, you know, the, the whoever is the spiritual head of the house, which by the word, the way God established it, it's the father. The father is the one that that it should be uh, walking with the Lord, worrying for their family, covering the family, and and we're gonna see just a just a little uh, farther uh, the importance of the of the father in in the blessings of the father. But I'm I'm jumping ahead of myself. So the covering of that spiritual um, head of the house. Uh, sadly, it, it's it's most of the time is the woman, the sixth God that is actually looking for freedom. You know, uh, we minister probably eighty percent of the people that we minister minister in in deliverance is women. That makes me sad and makes me angry as a man to see that the men don't step up and do what we are called to do be the head of the house i think man we have got it wrong we we have not understand we think that working providing it's being the head of the house that's not for a christian man for a christian man yes it is uh, that's part of it but for a christian man it has to be covering the wife, the kids, with our spiritual mantle. Uh, so when when you have that covering, whoever that is, that is the spiritual mantle of the house, and you pray for your younger kids, it's very easy, very simple. You pray, you bless them, you cover them with the blood of Jesus. If they're if they're suffering torment, you come against it, you cancel the torment, whatever that is fear you cast it out and it's so much easier we we have seen this with our younger kids our younger kids are so easy to be free they are going through something we pray for them you know it you know they 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 are connected the younger they are the the closer they are connected to the spiritual realm why because their life is not full of sin yet Yes, they're still carrying some things. Yes, there's there 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 are polluted. We all came polluted already. Uh, we still live in a body of sin. By the time we inherit this body, 
it's it's full of sin, but it does not compare to a <clears throat> a 30 year old, a 20 year old that has already dabbled into so much uh, sin. So that's why younger kids are so much easier to pray as long as you know how and you have the confidence of who you are. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you know that you have the authority. You've been trained. You've been trained to to um, to to have that authority to cast out demons, to heal the sick. You have that authority to <clears throat> command them to leave and they will leave. To cancel any sickness, to cancel any pain. And, and when the kids have been brought up this way, it's so easy for them. We see it in our kids. Uh, you know, they're experiencing something and they come to us. Can you pray for me? You know, from, the, uh, from our 8-year-old to our 14-year-old. Uh, so um, we see it and, and it's so easy to pray for them because they already believe it. They know that they're going to be healed. They know that, that the, the fear is going to go and, and it leaves. So we pray for uh, for those kids that way and, the, and our mantle covers them. Okay, what about the teenagers? The ones that already are rebellious, the ones that are already watching things that they're not from God, that contaminates them, they are tormented, the ones that are being rebellious. Uh, so how do we pray for them? We cannot pray the same way because first of all, they don't even want to be prayed for, some of them. They don't, they don't even believe, they think we're crazy. They see us old and religious. <clears throat> so the way we pray for them is asking God to send them dreams. Dreams that will shake them. Dreams that will torment them to make them come back to God. And I know that's a little hard. And if you don't agree, you don't have to pray that way. But I'd rather my son, I'd rather my 19-year-old to be tormented with dreams that he is missing the rapture, that he's not going with the Lord, that, that he is going to hell. I'd rather for him being tormented that way than being tormented by Satan. So we pray. That's the way we pray. We learn this. We pray, Lord, send them thoughts that, 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 they're, that they need you, feelings that they need you. Shake them. Make them understand that they cannot make them without. Don't give them peace. Don't let them be comfortable. Shake them. Shake them. <clears throat> also, we, what, what, the way we do is we cancel curses in them because this is a, a, a another aspect a lot a lot of the times or, or you know sometimes we because we didn't know the spiritual realm we curse our own kids because we didn't know that that our words have power when they were young we curse them so a lot of times what happened is that the, the, a, lot, the, a lot of the behavior that we are experiencing now on our kids, it's because we curse them. This is a real thing. Uh, in the, uh, with the people of Israel, if you see it in, in, the, in the Bible, it was so important. Every time the father was going to die, they were not worried about the inheritance, the, the material things. What they were worried is that they would be blessed. It was so important that, that Jacob went and, and stole the blessing from his older brother. 
because they knew that these things were real. If they were blessed by the higher authority, that those 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 blessings will come to pass. And we see that over and over in the word of God. But we as Christians, we have not been taught. So consequently, even some of us, we were probably not even Christians before, you know, before when we conceive our kids and we brought them up, you know, cursing them. You're not going to amount to anything. You're so dumb. You're just like your father. You're just like your mom. I hope you turn out good. You know, all these curses that we put in our kids. So a, a, a lot of the problem is part of the curses that we implanted in them, we are seeing now come to pass. So what we're going to do today. So we're going to what we're going to do today is we are going to reverse those curses. In our kids. We are going to cancel all those words that we said. And as a spiritual head of, of, of the family, we are our words are gonna have effects. Our words are gonna come to pass. We are going to bless them. And and I, I, I don't know it exactly, but you know, reading the book of Acts, I really have a feeling that that's exactly what Jesus Christ was doing when he asked Peter. Do you love me? Remember, he asked him three times. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Because if you read, it doesn't make sense that Jesus is asking him three times. Like it's repetitive. But there was a, a spiritual reason behind. Remember, he denied Jesus Christ three times. He cursed himself. Oh, I am not with that man. I am not with those. I am. I'm not one of those type of people. So I really believe that when Jesus Christ appeared to him and asked him, Peter, do you love me? He was breaking the curse that he had brought up to himself. Three times. Same, the same amount of times that he denied him. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to break the curses that we brought to our kids, through our teenagers, uh, our, even our older kids now, that they're struggling, that they're not walking with God. Because a lot of times we ask ourselves, well, why? What is it, you know? What did I do wrong? Well, our words have power. And if and if a kid was brought up into this world without love, without being one, and if you ever said, oh, how did I even end up having this kid? That's a curse that you're putting into that kid. And we have said stuff like that and we forgot. But in the spirit realm, those things are not forgotten. Those things are carried on. By the darkness, by spirits, by demons, by fallen angels. So if we are experiencing something like this, and the Lord is talking to you right now, you're going to remember those words that you said to your kids. And we're going to break them. We already explained how you pray for your younger kids. They're not a problem. Your younger kids are easy to be prayed for. Your mantle covers them. Cover them with the blood of Jesus and they're good. Our older kids that are not walking with God, and even if they are, we're going to bless them. Okay? We are going to bless them. Definitely. Of course. Because, see, this is the thing. We in the spirit realm... Um, we as, as Christians in the natural realm, we think with our human mind. The moment that you brought up that kid, the moment that you say the word, I do, 
you already engage in the spiritual. They're yours. They're your responsibility in the natural and in the spiritual. So those kids is still are under your covering. They're yours. See, in the spirit realm, there's no such a thing as a step kids. They're your kids. And the spirit realm doesn't doesn't seem that that is uh you know a break. In the spirit realm, they're your kids. The moment that you say I don't want those kids, that's where the break comes. And that could be your kid, and that could be a step kid, and that's a curse that you bringing up to those kids. We've actually heard before through Deliverance how um, in the spiritual realm, demons will catch on to the fact that a mom or dad has said, those aren't my kids. They they recognize those words mean separation and division in the household. So yeah. that gives them a legal right. So we have to be very careful because if you have a stepkids, they're, and, and you know, by law, they may be your stepkids. That's right. They can be cursed in the womb by words, by our own words. Yeah. So if you have stepkids by law, by our laws, our natural laws, maybe a stepkid. But in the spirit realm, it's your legal kid. There is a connection in the spiritual. The moment that you reject them and see that that's the next example. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. Because this happens a lot in broken marriages. When when uh, when the husband and wife gets mad at each other's kids, that's what that's exactly the words that are brought up. Well, those are not my kids. You are just cursing your marriage, that union, the kids. We have to be very, very careful what we do. And then we and then we don't understand why those the, the kids don't then we don't understand why the kids have a problem against us. The union has been broken. And so you have to understand that in the spirit realm, every word, every word, whether it's a curse or a blessing is carried on. A curse will gonna be carried on by a witch, by a demon, by a fallen angel to bring it to pass. Because now you have given a right in the spirit in the in the spirit realm. But also a blessing. A blessing in the spirit realm, the angels of the Lord carry those and bring them to pass. That's that's exciting. That's exciting. So we need to understand that every word that we that we talk, that we speak against a step kids is gonna have an effect, tremendous effect. Our kids tremendous effect they're both your kids if you marry somebody with the step kids they're your kids and the spiritual if you the moment that you say those are not my kids i don't have to provide for them or whatever is curses that the people say to each other those are carried on in the spiritual so if we have said that we're going to break that. We're going to repent. And we're going to take the legal rights that we have been given to the enemy and and cancel that. See, now I understand why um, the devil gets so mad about this, uh, us teaching all of this. Because these are real. These are real things that we're sharing. We have experienced it. I know what I'm talking about. This is, this is not just something that, you know, that we're just reading and, and sharing with you these are experiences i know it. i've seen it in the spirit realm i have it gone through deliverances i've seen deliverances where all of these things come up and the reason that, that they're experiencing certain things is because of the legal rights that were given when you were cursing that person in this case our kids 
So we're going to repent. First of all, we're going to repent over that. Over every word that you may not remember. But the Holy Ghost knows. And the spirit realm is still there. Still pending. And we're going to repent over that. Over every word that we don't remember. And we're going to break that curse the same way that Jesus did with Peter. We're going to bless them. We're going to bless our kids. And, and we're going to go to work. Is everybody ready? Anybody wants to share something or did, has a question? It doesn't matter. If they're... Address who you're talking to. Okay. <laughs> All right. I just read the comment and I just answered. <laughs> uh, Sophia is asking if, what if your brother and your stepbrother, stepsister, but they're not Christians? You have the authority. See, w when you are the spiritual leader in any family, you have the authority in the spiritual. It doesn't matter who, who it is. It doesn't matter who they are. Oh, that's an, that's an excellent question. Um, Sister uh, Luisa, uh, the question is, what, what about when it's another parent that is cursing the kid and they don't know or they haven't, or they have resentment against them? You, as the spiritual, see, we have to understand the power that we have. If they're your kids, it doesn't matter who curse them, you can cancel the curses with your word because your word has the breath of the father i love this and and when you know it and you believe it in the spiritual realm is it is it's it's notice notice it's light up and when you send the word when you send the, the, the word canceling that curse, it doesn't matter who it is who cursed you, it's canceled. We do this all the time because, uh, because of what we do, deliverance, spiritual warfare. We are constantly being cursed by people that we know and by people that we don't know, which is warlocks. And we know the power and authority that we have we cancel every word we cancel every curse so it doesn't matter who it is cursing your kids today we're going to cancel this all right if you don't have any kids you can you can pray with us that's right mackenzie's uh was saying uh, it, it, people curses other people unknowingly and we have done that even ourselves we have cursed ourselves unknowingly we have we're gonna be judged the word of god says that we're gonna be judged by every word that came out of our mouth there's a reason why because your word has power and authority whether you're a christian or not christian but if you're a christian you have more authority more power over every word, every curse, we have that authority. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You, you all are Christians, mature Christians, and we're going to cancel all those curses over our kids. Every word that we have said, every word that they have said, every curse that they have brought upon themselves. Uh, you know, a lot of times little ones because they have hurt us cursing ourselves they start using the same language and they're cursing themselves and they don't even know so we're gonna we're gonna cancel all of that if you don't have any kids you start you start canceling every word that you have brought up to you or anybody that curse you all right or if you have older teenagers that are being rebellious you still have the authority to come against the things that are coming against them um, to break through that demonic barrier that's that's tormenting them. So you still have the power and authority to also break those curses up over 
them as well, even though they're inflicting those curses on themselves. Whether it be drinking, smoking, partying, rebellion in general is witchcraft. All right. And we're going to have freedom today. Chains are going to be broken in our families and our, in stepkids. I don't like to call stepkids because there are your kids. When I understood that, that in the spiritual, there's no such a thing as a stepkid. Uh, I don't, I don't like that term. There are kids. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to bless. We can bless our, we're going to be, we're going to be blessing our families, brothers, sisters. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will send your Holy Spirit today. I ask you that you will fill every home that is represented in this life and whoever will listen to it 10 years from now. In the name of Jesus, bring <clears throat> discernment, knowledge. Send your angels surrounding these families in the name of Jesus. Lord, we repent because we have cursed our families, our kids. We didn't even know. We don't even remember. A lot of times we curse them without even knowing. We curse our, our little kids that now are grown and experience certain things because of those curses that we implanted in them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, every word that I spoke against my kids, unknowingly or knowingly, in the name of Jesus, I repent. And I take that legality in the spirit realm that I give to Satan. In Jesus' mighty name, I cancel that, that curse. In Jesus' mighty name, curses by words that I said, curses of words that my wife, my husband said to the kids, ex-husbands, grandmother, grandfather, mother-in-law, whoever it may be, they curse my kids. In the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, I cancel that those words, those curses. In the name of Jesus, knowing that I have the authority that you have given me, knowing that I'm sitting at the right hand of Jesus Christ ruling in high places. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every curse, every prayer. People have prayed against your family, against your kids, that, that they will not prevail. Not even knowing, sometimes knowingly and, unknowing, and, and unknowingly. In the name of Jesus, we break those curses. We break those prayers. We cancel those prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, every word, if you remember specifically, if the Holy Ghost is telling you a word that you said, cursing your kids, cursing your family, cursing your sisters, in the name of Jesus, right now repent. In just the same way that Jesus did bless them. In the name of Jesus, every curse that I said, Lord, turns into a blessing. I bless my, my kids, my boys, my girls. They will be prosperous, Lord, because that's what you want. That's what you have, the plans that you have for us, for them. They will be prosperous in the name of Jesus. I bless the girls. I bless the boys. They will be successful. They will be ministers of the word of Jesus Christ. They will be anointed. They will be taking the gospel. They will be great soldiers in the army of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, people will come and borrow from them. They will not be borrowing from anybody. People will come to borrow from them. In the name of Jesus, there will be great gentlemen, great ladies, great anointed people of God. In the name of Jesus, we bless them as the head of, as the spiritual head of the family. I bless all my family. Every curse that I said against my family, in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> I repent. I cancel that legality in the spirit realm. In the name of Jesus, in every right that it was given against my family, my boys is canceled 
void in the name of Jesus. I wash them with the blood of Jesus. I wash myself with the blood of Jesus. Every curse is a sin. Lord, washed in the blood of Jesus. Washed in the blood of Jesus. I send angels protecting them. Every place where they may be. If they are still at home with us. In the name of Jesus, we bless their room. I send angels in the room. In the name of Jesus, if they're out of the house. If they're in another house with another parent. In Jesus' mighty name, the angels of the Lord will go wherever the children of God are. And in Jesus' mighty name, we send angels protecting them at work with friends. Even if they're not walking with you, Lord, I send angels protecting them. Lord, if they have rebelled against you, in the name of Jesus, I ask you that you will send dreams. Lord, that you will not give them peace. That you will bring them to you. That you will bring them back. In the name of Jesus, if they are, if they are against you, my Lord, in the name of Jesus, I repent on their behalf. I repent for everything that I did wrong in Jesus mighty name I repent for every curse that I said that it harmed them and, the, and as a result they are rebelling against you in the name of Jesus I break those curses in Jesus mighty name and I ask you that you will send your angels protecting them Lord I send angels Lord pushing them speaking to them to their minds to their souls to their in dreams that they will come back to you to put the need in their mind in their soul in their spirit to give them dreams tormenting them let them know that you're still alive that you that you still need that you still want them to come back that you still love them in the name of jesus if they're if they're if they feel lack of love my lord i ask you that you will let them feel your love that they will come back to you in the name of Jesus. We <clears throat> send angels surrounding them, pushing them, protecting them in the name of Jesus. And we stand in their behalf, Lord praying for them asking for them <clears throat> sending angels surrounding them breaking every curse that it was said against them every curse that our own family friends or, or people that are have envy towards them in the name of jesus at work co-workers that curses them in the name of jesus i cancel those curses in jesus mighty name every curse the witches word like will put in them in the name of jesus i cancel those curses I break them. I break the legality. I break the contract that it was given in the spirit realm because of words that they might said. In the name of Jesus, if they curse themselves, in Jesus' mighty name, I break those curses as a head of the house, as a spiritual <clears throat> guide, as a spiritual mantle over them in the name of jesus we break that legality we break those contracts in jesus mighty name every demon we take that legality away from you every witch we take that legality away from you in the name of jesus and we choose to bless them every curse will turn into a blessing in jesus mighty name Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is something that we need to be doing daily for our kids. Daily fighting on their behalf. Pushing them. Sending angels. Sending covering. Because of them not being not walking with God. They, they'll give legality in the spirit realm. And we as a spiritual head. We can go and break that. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord hallelujah i feel that this this was very helpful i know that chains were broken in the spiritual praise the lord hallelujah thank you father thank you for being here we bless you and we see you on sunday if anybody wants to share anything you're welcome <laughs> Praise the Lord. Freedom, Elsie. Freedom. Freedom. And it's the same way that you can pray for yourself. Break all those curses that people that our own parents spoke against us. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord, freedom. I felt chains were broken. Amen. All the all the curses that our parents implanted in us that we're still struggling with. See, we have to understand the power of the words. Uh, people are 50, 60 years old and is still struggling with curses that a parent implanted in them when they were young. You are so dumb. Just as simple as that. Because it hurt us so much that it, it, it took an effect in the spirit realm. And the devil makes you believe that you are dumb. You will not be successful. You're, you're going to turn out just like your mom, just like your dad, an alcoholic. All those things, and then you are struggling with alcohol. But praise the Lord for the power and authority of His name. That we can come and break those curses. And Jesus mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. May I say something? Of course. Also, um, I was praying and I was, you know, applying the methods that I have learned. Thank you for your beautiful ministry and I bless you guys. And the Holy Spirit brought it to my to my to to my attention that I needed to cancel the fact that I was a product of an adultery. Mm. Because you know, because I had not come against that and I again had some deliverance you know just experiencing that sometimes we don't realize that the way that our conception or how we became um or came into this world also has a lot of things already attached to them because we're products of these infidelities or uh, of not um pe people that are married or whatnot so that was something that really made me just think of that when you were mentioning that right now praise the lord that's awesome. that's an excellent um excellent point See, the, I think this we I think this uh, something that we can that we need to continue probably next week. Mm -hmm. That that was an excellent point, and and we can come against um, the way we we were conceived mm -hmm. and all of these things. So, we and not only that, with with when it comes to our our children, we can curse our children by overprotecting them in a sense, not correcting them. Uh, there's several things that we do as parents not knowing that later on they are heavily infected by the choices that we implemented in their lives or didn't show them correctly. So there's there's definitely a lot of things that we can talk about when it comes to the subject of cursing our kids. I think we're going to continue this next, uh, next Wednesday. And we're just going to open it up not just for kids but us as parents as as husband and wife relationships that we have been in the past relationship with our parents yes we're gonna we're gonna continue this so that that's that's great so we have a um a word for for next and we're gonna have more freedom praise the lord all right <clears throat> yes, Elsie, that's definitely a strong root for sure. Yes. All right, guys, we will be back on Sunday. Um, do you know what we're talking about Sunday? Yeah, we have a class. The levels, different levels of walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll have a title by tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, good night. We'll see you on Sunday. We bless you guys. Sophia, go to Blessings. <laughs> Blessings.